Uh, thank you for letting me come to speak here today. My name is Tim Einstein, and I'm going to talk to you about algae-based biofuels. So starting off, how many of you ever heard of biofuels that are made from algae before? A good number of you? Well, biofuels in general are a new, it's, it's a fairly recent type of fuel that's been around. Um, they, you know, just never really came to, like, they're, they're very new. Unlike fossil fuels, which have been around for a pretty good amount of time, fossil fuels are very, like, they're not, fossil fuels are, uh, it's a consumable resource, there are not many of them left, you know, they've slowly been deteriorating, but the main reason, like, people have been doing research on algae-based biofuels is so that they can find a renewable resource that allows them to just constantly get something, in, like, get more and more without having to like you know use up any part of the environment. It's also a lot cleaner. Um, <clears throat> also like one thing about knowing fossil fuels, because it's a decreasing commodity, they're becoming more and more expensive. You know, just like for instance gas prices in general, they're very they get more expensive. How many people have cars? You know? And I'm assuming as you all know, like you know, gas prices are expensive, especially over the past like five or six years. They've become very you know, it's, it's very inconvenient, and well, Blacksburg has a few things that allow you to get around easier, such as the transit system, and plus, like, you know, everything is, you know, around the same area, so you usually just walk to places or bike somewhere, but it is pretty much of a problem, you know, just the consumableness of fossil fuels. Okay, my objectives today are to tell you about uh, how algae-based biofuels are created, how those algae-based biofuels function, and then the importance and like of how they impact our environment and our economy. <clears throat> okay, just give a brief history on the algae-based biofuels. They started doing research on them back in the 1950s. It was never really a big thing back then. They kind of just like, oh, let's try this. You know, it might lead to something. And you know, they just started doing research on it. Never really picked up. It was the project was terminated in 1995 because of financial constraints and the fact that. During that time, oil prices were very low, so it made gas prices very low, so like, you know, they didn't really see any reason to start researching more and wasting more money on something they didn't really need. But just recently, uh, with the increased oil prices and environmental concerns, they brought the project back just to um, find a new resource they can use. Like, you know, they have other resources that are renewable, such as solar, wind power, but all these are like fairly inconvenient compared to something that you can seriously like throw anywhere, such as algae. <clears throat> and uh, pretty much like anyone can develop it as well. Being like I said, algae grows anywhere, so anyone like even like developing countries can grow algae and do research in this area. You know how they function. Uh, Algae needs things such as nitrous, nitrogen, phosphorus, sunlight, and carbon dioxide in order to, to grow and thrive. And this can be found in pretty much any water source. Um, specifically in places where there's a lot of pollution, such as like, you know, New York or Chicago or places like that, where the runoff from like sewage or from other things causes excess stuff to build up, which then causes so like the local flora and fauna to suffer. Uh, and algae it only takes about five to eight days to propagate, and so it's very it's something that you can constantly grow, constantly harvest, and it allows it to be very readily accessible. And the way that they turn this algae into a fuel is that they start off by like they say growing it, it takes five to eight days. They then, you know, harvest it, they dry it out, scrape it. This is the term they use. And then they, they extract the carbohydrates from the algae, and then they convert that to sugars. The sugars are then converted into butyric uh, acetic and lactic acids, which then they take the butyric acid and change it into butanol, which is done by a process called electrodeionization, which pretty much is where they, you, you know, put it in the water source, and you ionize the water, and then it pretty much just separates the good stuff from the bad, in other words. And then the butanol is used in place of ethanol, which is actually a whole lot cleaner. It's around 20% more like or less emissions than ethanol. And also ethanol tends to, if, if it's used too much, it tends to like hurt, like say, the, the engine of a internal combustion engine. 
it starts to like wear it down, whereas butanol is a lot cleaner, it doesn't affect it nearly as much. And uh, some advantages of you know, algae-based biofuels, like I said before, it's less expensive. The process of like, you know, electro-deionization and just like harvesting it in general, it's a, it's a very inexpensive process. Like I said earlier, developing countries, global countries, they all can do stuff like this. Like, like I said before, literally algae grows everywhere. And like I said, it's more efficient, um, it burns cleaner, you get more use out of it. And this, I, I looked at this one statistic, it actually says that they use like the carbohydrates from it to you know make butanol, but they also can use it to make like feed for animals. And I thought that was really interesting. Also, it helps pollute waters become waters become more healthy because algae, in order to grow, it needs phosphorus and nitrogen, which are two of the most like common things that you find in water that causes problems. It uses that up, and so then it actually makes waters cleaner each time you use it. So that's why I said they use it in places where, like, such as like New York or Chicago or any other polluted area. It helps clean up the environment a whole lot. And then the importance of algae-based biofuels, like I said before, it's a healthier form of energy. You know, not as healthy or clean, you could say, as you know, solar or wind, which uses exactly, which is uses the energy from the earth itself. But it is a lot healthier than you know having to drill into the ground, dig up crude oil, then convert that through like very complicated and expensive processes to turn it into things such as gasoline or diesel. Like I said, it's an alternative and renewable resource. You can always grow more algae. Like, you know, some people have a problem of having too much. That's the problem. So, uh, unlike fossil fuels, like I said before, there's a limited amount. It's only there's only so much here, and once you use it, it's gone. You know, you can't use any more of it. Whereas even biofuels that are made from corn, you, know, you can always grow more corn. You can always grow more algae. These things are just a renewable resource. And also. Anyone can do it. Like, it's, like I've said numerous times, it's like a third, or developing countries, you know, it's a very easy thing for them to do. So they can be researching to it, they can get money off of that. And, you know, this is evenly distributed. You know, fossil fuels, 60% of fossil fuels are located in the Middle East. So that the people from the Middle East can easily regulate it. That's one reason why gas prices are so high because they're like, oh, hey, we got all this is over here. You know, why not charge more? We can make more money off of it. Whereas algae, like I said before, it can be grown anywhere, so it gives everyone equal opportunities to grow it. And, you know, it's less expensive. The process is very easy. The process is very simple. It's very easy to do. And in closing, I'd like just to go over, you know, what we've done already, how the algae based buffers were created. You know, something like someone somewhere came up with the idea of, hey, you know, let's use this, because algae does give off. Uh, methane by itself, and then you can just use that originally, or like use butanol, like I said before. Also, how they function pretty much as any explosive gas can be used in a fossil fuel or used in the internal combustion engine to use for fuel. And also, like uh, it, 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 it helps our environment and economy a lot. Me personally, I feel like we should turn more toward these renewable resources. Because, just because of the fact that fossil fuels, like I said before, are a limited commodity. They're something that won't be here forever. They're not something that is very efficient. And so in order for us to thrive in the future, we need to turn to resources that can help us you know, grow more as a nation, grow more as the world in general. And uh, I'd like to say I hope everyone learned something interesting about uh, algae-based biofuels. And I hope that you all will help support it in the future, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Any questions?